Hey fellow golfers, this is Robbie from Best Ball. One of the most popular names in the golf accessory market today is Western Birch. Stop reaching in your pocket for boring plastic or plain white golf tees and elevate your game with premium wooden golf tees from Western Birch. You can customize both the hardwood and bamboo tees with one of their signature stripe patterns in a wide variety of colors. These tees are stylish enough to stand apart from the crowd, traditional enough to align with golf's heritage, and durable enough to make you forget about using anything else. Enter the code BESTBALL in the promo field in your shipping cart to add a free gift to your order. So visit westernbirch.com and get your own premium wood golf tees in the style that suits your game. And my teaching career is just about what does the person in front of me need to enjoy golf more? So sometimes that might just be like for the beginner, just giving them the confidence of like, where to stand, where, like how to put their clubs properly in their golf bag, how to check into a, a, a pro shop, that kind of thing. And then it can be all the way to competitive golfers who need kind of every single little detail to get them 1% better every day, right? So there's a pretty big spectrum of how people and why people enjoy golf. So I love kind of putting those puzzle pieces together for them and with them. Have you ever told somebody they would enjoy it better if they just watched? Boys and girls, welcome to the Whole Story Podcast. My name is Jonathan, hanging out with my good buddy, Robbie, and we are uh, here today with Kyla Inaba. Uh, we are stoked about this. As soon as we found out how famous she is north of the border, we're like, we've got to get her on. So here's a little bio. She is uh, works for the PGA of Canada Professional. She's the Director of Academy at the Predator Ridge Resort in British Columbia. Uh, 2023 PGA British Columbia Alvy Thompson Teacher of the Year. So basically, Robbie and I are going to be professionals by the end of the show, I think is what she said. She's going to give us some tips. We're going to go from like 95 down to par, so it'll be great. Uh, she's also married to, this is probably lesser of a thing, but she's married to Jason Calamaro, uh, Squid Design, so uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that, and famous mother to Henry, uh, from what we understand as well. So, uh, Kyla, welcome to the Whole Story Podcast. Thank you. I don't know about all the famous stuff. You're making me feel so special, but thanks for having me. No, like you're teacher of the year for professional golfers in an entire country. So that's pretty famous, was, right? Yeah, it was um, a provincial kind of recognition this year. And um, it was cool, cool to be recognized by my peers and uh, had some hard yards. I've done my time kind of in the industry and uh, just I just love getting people better at golf. So there you go. Well, you say you've done your time. You obviously didn't pick this up like two years ago. You weren't a bad junior golfer. Is that right? I, I definitely played some junior golf, some collegiate golf. I played professionally for a bit, and then I've been teaching for the last seven years. So um, had lo I've had lots of different kind of career paths within uh, the golf industry. I read uh, I read an article that I can't remember where I was reading it uh, earlier, but you, you hung up the ice skates and picked up the golf clubs. Is that right? Actually, well... As a, maybe I'm a bad Canadian because I've never actually played hockey. Um, and so I didn't skate too much, but I played tons of other sports growing up. And, uh, and then, yeah, golf is just one of my favorites. And it's just one of those challenges that is never ending. So it was just something that fit for me. I love the challenge. Well, you said you like helping people get better at golf. So what is it about teaching the game of golf? Um, I always like to compare it to my playing career where my playing career was like more about me and how I can be successful. Um, and my teaching career is just about what does the person in front of me need to enjoy golf more? So sometimes that might just be like for the beginner, just giving them the confidence of like where to stand, where, like how to put their clubs properly in their golf bag, how to check into a, a, a pro shop, that kind of thing. And then it can be all the way to competitive golfers who need kind of every single little detail to get them 1% better every day, right? So there's a pretty big spectrum of how people and why people enjoy golf. So I love kind of putting those puzzle pieces together for them and with them. Have you ever told somebody they would enjoy it better if they just watched? <laughs> You know what? No, I get, I totally get people being like, are you just going to give up on me? And I'm like, no, there is always hope. Like anyone who wants to play this game, there is hope. We just got to find 
the right strategy on what is best for them, right? Did you have a did you have a good teacher growing up that kind of uh, you you mimic what you do after? Um, a little bit. I think when I first got into teaching, you obviously know only what you have been through, probably. Um, and so I had some pretty great instructors growing up, good mentors, um, college coaches in like the golf and fitness world. And then as I played professionally, I just my network expanded pretty quickly, especially with playing professionals who then turn into teachers um, and that kind of thing. So because I played worldwide, I just feel like I gained so many mentors and knowledge through my network. Um, so, yeah, I would say it's not just one kind of uh coach or past instructor that's influenced me it's like a ton of different people it sounds like there's a lot of flexibility in how you're teaching people although to be fair you just unlocked a whole new fear of mine i didn't know there was a right or wrong way to put clubs into a golf bag so now <laughs> i literally as soon as you said that started thinking through how do i put my golf clubs in a golf bag <laughs> did i do that right right i think i don't know i think there's like some probably type a's that always have their place for each club right um, I don't go as far as club covers. I don't know about you guys, but uh, that's an option. Well, he's left-handed, so his clubs are wrong to start with. Yeah, they're always in the wrong oh, yeah, spot. Totally. Wrong side. Of the... <laughs> yep. Well, you have a, a program called Swing Like a Girl, right? You're trying to encourage other women to get in the game of golf. Tell us, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, for sure. Swing Like a Girl is um, kind of one of our flagship programs up, up, up at Predator Ridge. And um it has, it's a big umbrella. So it's a lifestyle program. We've got um, kind of weekly clinics. We've got daily camps. We've got multiple day camps. Um, and then we have a swing like a girl night as well to just get people out on the course. It's uh, more of a kind of social theme. Um, but yeah, it's just encouraging kind of any level of gal who wants to get out there and play to just come out and have fun and uh, get into golf. Hey golf friends, this is Robbie from Best Ball. Are you looking for the ultimate Myrtle Beach golf experience? Well, it's only a click away. Check out the two-play special at two of America's most awarded public golf courses and two of my personal favorites. Caledonia Golf and Fish Club and True Blue Golf Club are low country masterpieces featuring two iconic Mike Strance designs. Play these two incredible courses for one great price Visit TrueBlueGolf.com to learn more about the two-play special and book your tee time today. That's TrueBlueGolf.com. Do, do you see a lot of uh, women transition into more competitive out of that? Or do, they, or do you have like a mix of people that are just sort of staying there for the social aspect, but as well as the or, or trending towards the competitive? Um, I would say it's a mix. Generally with um, our Swing Like a Girl program and maybe golf in general right now is a little bit more social. I think the compet like we'll find a few competitive people or people that um, kind of progress really quickly. But I would say for the most part, like priority one is just make it fun, right? And I, I, I use that too with my competitive players. Like it's got to stay fun. Otherwise, you're not going to want to continue to grind, right? Um, but I think generally swing like a girl, it tends to be more social, fun. Um, and then there's programs in place for competitive golfers as well, right? So it's a good mix. It's a good mix. It, uh, we were talking earlier, and you said uh, Predator Ridge, which, side note, sounds like it could be the hardest golf course in the world. Like, what a name, right? Um, but you mentioned you all have a hard start date of, I think, April 1st. Uh, in your training, you have online training classes and videos and, and things like that that people can do. Is, is the conditions of where you are uh, there uh, in British Columbia, is that why you've kind of done more of the online stuff? Or how did that come about? Yeah, it's an interesting mix. So um, Predator Ridge, it is a hardcore name. I love it. Um, we do open early April. So this year we're opening April 10th, I think, is our first member's day. Um, and yeah, just like you kind of said there, Robbie, because of our climate, um, for me, it's a really great way to, yes, do in-person coaching kind of from April till mid-October um, and then hop into the online space kind of in the winter. Uh, so I do have my kind of online preseason course just to get people like people are so antsy by the time March and April come around. So it's just like a little four lesson series to get people brushed up on the fundamentals. Um, and then I did a coaching mentorship with Shaheen Nakjiavani, um, who's one of the kind of premier online coaches in the world. And so he's a huge mentor of mine. So he got me into kind of more online coaching. 
I use the Skillist app platform. Um, and so it's an interesting space to be in. It really does kind of, there's no barriers, right? Like I can coach someone in Australia and the UK and someone locally or my current clients that I do in-person lessons with. But while I'm away in the winter, I can just hop online and do lessons with them. So it's a really great way to keep your coaching going all year. Is that online coaching where like we would have like a session like this where you're getting on a call or is it there's a set of practices and drills and things like that that they follow along and you sort of track their progress that way? Yeah, so it can be anything, Jonathan. That's a good question. So like my course that I sell is all pre-recorded. So you just follow along at whatever time you would like, right? Um, then I do a lot of Zoom calls with my junior elites and some of my clients that want kind of like an in-person checkup, but online. Um, so we just hop on a Zoom call and I just talk to them while they're hitting balls um, and it's pretty simple. And then there's, um, especially when we have time zone issues, they just send videos via a skillless lesson. Um, I'll send them like a little analysis and then a demonstration of what I want them to do. And then they'll send me kind of their, okay, coach, I understand this, is that correct? And I go, yep, that's perfect, here's your homework, go for it. So it's a little bit of everything, again, it's pretty cool. I think that's a great idea, especially, I mean, I'm in South Carolina, so I, I, we don't really have an off season, right? It might be 40 degrees or raining, so you can't, you know, you don't want to go play. But I would imagine the the preseason or, or uh, whatever the conditioning or drills to do prior to the course's opening are appealing that way when they do open since it's a short season that you can take advantage and play your best golf when when you can finally get on grass yeah that's exactly it i kind of like i kind of go boom 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 when people just like they book their first lesson in like may i'm like oh man we could have started two or three months ago but um whatever everyone's got their own timeline right so i just want to provide options for all types and styles and levels of golfers well, you mentioned Predator Ridge only being open for, gosh, five or six months, which seems so weird for us. I'm, wearing, I'm in Augusta, too, so it's like I'm, I could go outside today, but I might get wet. So right. what is it about the, the golf course and the club up there that really drew you to that space? Um, yeah, so it's a six-month season. Uh, the Okanagan Valley, which is where we live, uh, kind of has all four seasons, which is cool. I grew up in the Okanagan, so obviously coming home after kind of my touring professional golf career, was an easy shift um and so i just love how we do get an off season like i find in the golf industry sometimes you can go 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 and never stop and it's just a nice reset you know to have those seasons um and especially now as a parent like it is the golf season's crazy like when we're in golf season i'm not home that much um so to have that winter to spend with my family too is uh, a really nice feature at least at this time in my life at this stage of my life well, you mentioned married life and being a mom, uh, married to Jason. Uh, Squid Design, we had him on uh, a few weeks back. We enjoyed that. And again, like Jonathan said, when he mentioned you, we were like, wait a minute, we really need to have you on the podcast uh, and we want to learn more about what you're doing and everything. But I guess for a second, tell us about your relationship, Jason, like and your thoughts on what he's doing with Squid Design. We, won't, we, we don't want to ask you about that. We want to know more about you, but just maybe sum up what you think about what he's doing. Yeah, um, that was a great segue, by the way. Um, yeah, Squid Design is really cool. I think how everything's come about for him, coming from being like abandoned caddy, his relationship with kind of some of the other golf media guys, um, and then now kind of morphing that into what he does is a really cool story. And to see him start from literally just zero, like this is just maybe a, a fun craft idea, um, hobby idea, to now you see his signs like across America and getting into international places. So his products just getting better and better. Um, and so to see his kind of business expand like that is really cool. Does Predator Ridge, does he done, has he done some for you guys? He's done a few demo signs. It's always interesting getting um, products shipped across the border and all the extras mm -hmm. that go along with that. But uh, yeah, watch for, watch for stuff in the near future. Do you have a favorite uh, sign that he's done? Um, ooh, he's done a lot of really cool ones. I think just having the different um, Band and Dune signs from like his very first version to now version whatever number he's on um, and just laying them out one after the other are probably my favorite just because it's going back to the beginning. 
Very nice. Well, we mentioned you're a mom as well. Mom to Henry, I think you said he's two, if I'm correct. Uh, yep, and before we, true. yeah, before we started recording, you said he's he's swinging some plastic clubs and, and getting after it. Totally, yeah. So as, obviously, as an instructor and a coach, I know kind of all the periodizations for kids. So <laughs> I'm like, we don't want Henry to miss out on the speed windows. We got to train him now. <laughs> um, obviously, just joking, but. Uh, he does have a little plastic club, and I just say, swing, Henry, swing as fast as you can. So uh, it's been fun just obviously watching them develop every stage is, like, so cool. He'll Most... soon be chipping uh, golf balls into the dryer, right, just like Roy did? Yeah. Oh, yeah, hopefully. I forgot about that. But it's yeah, got to be indoors. It's, it's winter, so you got to accommodate idea. for it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Most kids have their parents watching cartoons, and, and Henry's watching his mom's instructional videos. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yep. he is. Yep. He definitely well, you... is already. You need to check out, and this isn't a plug, but we had him on, but Tyler Johnson is doing Charlie golf bags, and they're toddler golf bags. It oh, is yeah. really cool. Yeah, it's really cool yeah. what he's doing. So yeah. uh, maybe Henry needs to get uh, get one of those to, to carry his plastic clubs around. Yeah, Jason and I, and I have talked about that already, actually. <laughs> Very nice. We've got a trade deal between Charlie and uh, Squid Designs. There you go. Yeah, good idea. That'd be a good collaboration. Yeah. Well, we always have to ask if you listen to a couple of our shows, uh, and you, you might have a lot to choose from because, again, ladies and gentlemen, she's a pro, like legit all the way. Um, what is your most memorable golf shot? Um, yeah, this is a hard one. There's there's a lot. Um, See, that's what I'm saying. We've had like three. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I think when I was playing professionally, um, I was playing down in Australia, and we were playing in the Vic Open, the Victorian Open, and so a lot of some of the LPGA girls would come and play that. Uh, European Tour girls would come and play that. And um, so I was paired with Laura Davies. I, like, just made the cut. And Laura Davies, who, for those people who don't know, she's, like, a legendary LPGA player. And she, like, bombs it. Um, so there I am. And I, I haven't played in, like, that many big events. I've played in the Australian Tour, but this was, like, a major for the Australian Tour. And so I had just made the cut, like, on the number. And so I was just, like, super nervous. And then on top of that, I'm playing with Laura Davies. So um, one of my highlight golf shots would be kind of outdriving Laura Davies. Like, kind of all day long, I was keeping up to her. And then, like, I, I got her by a couple yards on one. And I was like, oh, man, this is a highlight, like, for life, right? So I would say that's one of my probably biggest golf shot highlights. I've had a few others, but uh, that's probably my one of my faves. Do you remember if you beat her for the day? Um, I believe we tied or it went one shot one way or the other. Yeah. 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 So it's fun. Hitting, hitting further is fun, right? Yeah. You kept walking up to the first ball and be like, oh, that, that's you. I'm way up here. I'm sorry. <laughs> right. She's like, she's a great gal. And like, uh, I think she's playing like legends tour stuff now. So, um, she's just a legend in, in the LPGA. Right. So, and a lot of fun, like great sense of humor too. So great gal. Where did you do most of your professional career? You mentioned you were on the Australian tour, plus Europe and other places. Yep. So um, most of my professional golf, I played five seasons, I think, down in Australia. Um, I played some mini tour stuff in America, uh, the Canadian Women's Tour, when that was still going on a bunch of years back. And uh, I had some status on the Symmetra Tour when it was still the Symmetra Tour, and now it's the Epson Tour which is just underneath the LPGA. Um, so yeah, a, a mishmash of everything. When you're kind of at that stage of like, let's see if I can make it. You just play anything and everything. And uh, yeah, it was super fun while I did it. And sometimes I look back on it and I'm like, that was crazy, all that stuff I did and chasing the little white ball around the world. But um, I wouldn't change it for anything. It's obviously part of who I am, so. Might be the first Canadian I've heard say y'all. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you mentioned the Symmetra Tour. Uh, I caddied, little known fact, I caddied one day on the Symmetra Tour for an event um, for Amy Neff, who's now the head coach at uh, North Carolina. Um, cool. She, They were playing in Charlotte, and, you know, she would, if she had a friend or family or somebody come close, and being in Columbia, that was close enough. And so, yeah, I did one day. I did not get asked for another day. She already, she already oh. had somebody else lined up, but I didn't I, I didn't mess up. I just... Okay. Uh, I was no Jason or no Bandon, Bandon caddy, uh, let's say it that way. So, but it was a lot. It was a lot of fun. They were like you, I'm sure. It was great golf to watch. Way better than we are. But it's, anyway, it's a lot. It's a lot of fun. Um, as you know, like uh, from your experience, maybe like there is a lot of stuff you got to do when you're a caddy, right? So, um, actually, Jason used to caddy for me 
in bigger events like uh, LPGAQ school and stuff used to caddy for me, and it uh, it was stressful. <laughs> but it yeah. was good. I trusted him, but it was a stressful thing on our relationship sometimes. Yeah, I imagine it's got to be tough for you know for somebody like Amy that gets random people to do it, like me that has never done it before. Like, all right, I've got to play well, but I also have to make sure my caddy doesn't do something dumb that'll penalize me. Um, which yeah. I was trying to stay out of the way and just hand her a club that she wanted. So, yeah. anyway, well, that's awesome. That yeah, there. I mean, being in Australia, that's uh, for what five seasons. That's that's pretty sweet, and that'll I guess maybe that'll kind of lead us into we we do this thing called a quick nine, and uh, maybe one of the courses that we're going to ask you about uh, is the answer to this. But we always kind of start out. What's your what's your favorite course that you've ever played? Today's podcast is sponsored by Atomic Golf. If you need custom ball markers, divot repair tools, and more that are made from high quality materials like solid copper and brass and look really good, then you should check out our friends at Atomic Golf. If courses like Old Barnwell, Landman, Sweetens Cove, and more are already working with them, then you should too. Visit AtomicGolf.club and follow them on Instagram at AtomicGolf. Oh, I just did one of those things on Instagram, like list your... your I did see courses. that. I did. I took a <laughs> screenshot of that. I already know the answer, but I'll let you share right. it. Um, so I would say my top is uh, we were fortunate enough to play Terra E.T. in New Zealand which is like an uber private, like ranked in the top, whatever. I'm not sure five in the world, maybe. Um, but it was the golf course obviously was amazing. Um, but the experience, like everything from like driving in to checking in to like going to the rain, the whole thing was just an amazing experience. So that's for sure my number one. Um, I did it with Jason. So obviously that's uh, a pretty great memory for us. Very nice. Those those in the golf world that always say Augusta National or Cyprus, uh, if you expand your your reach and look up Terra Edi, that would obviously be high up on your bucket list. So yeah. that is For really sure. cool that you've gotten to play it. It might For be sure. just as difficult to get in as the others. So yes, yeah, yeah, you definitely got to know someone to get in. Yeah, that's right. Or become a women's professional golfer. No, that's not even enough. Like we got, we had to know a few people. Oh, Jason, I see. Jason pulled some strings. Uh, through his band and connection. So it was great. It was awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, it sounds like you already made it, but what is your bucket list course? Um, so the new course at Terra Iti, I don't know how to pronounce it. It might be Ta'ari, but so that's a public course versus Terra Iti's private. So that's on oh. my bucket list for sure. Um, oof. I'd say that's at the top right now. Maybe Sand think- Valley. We haven't played Sand Valley yet. Um, so... I have to get out there. Shorties win Bandon Open Shorties. Yeah, but know. New Zealand. Yeah, I know. Right? I like, know. Yeah. We New haven't Zealand. played anything in Scotland either yet. So, I mean, our bucket list is long. We just got to find the time. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Ours too. Uh, we might need a second bucket, so. Yeah, for sure. For <laughs> sure. Yep. All right. As a teacher, what's the hardest part of the game of golf to teach? Um. Ooh, the hardest part? Probably, I'm thinking more about like my junior elite uh, athletes, and it's probably like attitude and how to practice um, and how to get better. I think a lot of instruction nowadays, especially with Instagram and all the socials, is like there's a lot of mechanical information and technical information, but kind of the missing link sometimes or the secret sauce is like how you apply it. So like building a good practice plan. Um, how do you become gritty, especially for those kids who want to play collegiate golf? What's your plan? What's your blueprint? And getting the golfer to be motivated to do it and not just have their coach tell them what to do. It's like, well, what do you want to do and how are you going to do it? And how am I going to guide you to that? So, yeah. That's, yeah. I that, don't know that how to do a bit of a deep answer. Sorry I don't know how to do the first <laughs> That's part. great. No, that's perfect. <laughs> like, I can't do all the shots part, so I'm just going to work on the other side. That'll be easier to figure out how to be gritty. Yeah. yeah. I mean, technically, obviously, it's, uh, I think uh, the easier lessons are people who slice it, getting them to draw it. I think sometimes the people who have issues drawing it, it just requires more effort and more kind of patience to turn that draw or snap hook into a little bit more of a neutral cut. So there's your technical answer. It's like she's speaking directly to me. I can't believe I could become good at golf if I could fix my slice. This would be amazing. Yeah. Jonathan, she has some online lessons you can sign up for. I, I, listen, Skillist. I'm already, thinking, already thinking about it. I've already Skillist. Yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, 
What? Who is your favorite pro golfer to watch? Uh, currently. Or if you want to go back on old YouTube, yeah, sure. Yeah, we you can find it. you can find clips everywhere. Okay, so Tiger, like old Tiger Woods, for yeah. sure. Um, on the female side, I love watching Annika and Lorena Ochoa. Um, and then currently, oh, I don't have like a super favorite because I love just watching, oh, Scotty Scheffler, Colin Morikawa, uh, Jason Day is coming back. Like, I just love seeing all those guys in the mix, right? Like, so I don't have a favorite, but I just like what's happening at the top right now. Yeah. Great answer. Yeah. Great answer. Yeah. If you, uh, if you were to play, um, wherever and you could have a dream for some, who would be in it? Oh, Jason's going to get on me for this one. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, so my dream for some now is probably Jason, Henry, my dad, and my mom, if she wanted to play. She's like a social golfer, but that's probably my dream for some now. Just family's a little bit more. Uh, so Jason, Jason Day, family. Henry. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, my husband. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you get to yeah. add your mom. Like, Henry's just a ride-along, right? He's just going to putt with his plastic stuff on the greens. Right, right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think that's my dream for them right now. It's all about who you play with. Totally, totally. All right, what is your favorite snack on the course? Oh, that's a good one. Um, I would say, oof, I don't know, like pepperoni sticks sometimes. <laughs> like, that's a bit of a weird Eat one. jerky. Yeah, beef jerky, pepperoni. Um, I don't know. I tell my juniors to, like, obviously have a banana and probably some uh, trail mix, something like that, just making sure they're balanced. Yeah, a little bit of protein to keep you going. But I, I can never, like, if I'm playing social fun golf, like, give me a hot dog, give me a dirty dog, like, you know. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, next question. We will take Predator Ridge out of the uh, out of the running for this one, just to keep you safe there. But what is your favorite golf course logo? Favorite favorite golf course logo? That's a tough one because I probably would have said Predator with the hawk. We have a really cool hawk logo. I like the simplicity of the Shaughnessy logo, which is just like a little triangular tree. Um, yeah, I'll probably go with with Shaughnessy. It's just like a classic. Okay. Yeah. All right. Would you rather have? Would you rather win a golf tournament or have one of your students win a golf tournament? Oh, now for sure, my students. I don't care about my playing career anymore. <laughs> Speaking of your students, do you have anyone? Do you have any girls that are coming down for the Anwa? Do you have anybody that you've been connected to? Getting I do way? not. I'm just taking on a couple of competitive girls for the first time this season coming up. So um, here's hoping to in the future. Um, but yeah, that would be really cool. If they need to practice their media skills, we know a podcast that would love to have them on. Totally. Seriously, totally. that'd be awesome. Like, awesome. get them start from the very beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, final question of the quick nine. This one's going to be a tough one now. Who's the better golfer, you or Jason? Ooh, that is very <laughs> tough. Um, I would say, I'd say it's pretty close, to be honest. I can't really put it one way or the other. Jason tends to make... Uh, like longer bombs at just the right moment. So uh, we tend to always on our vacation golf, we'll have like an ongoing match for the week or whatever. Um, and quite often it comes down to that last round. So yeah. Just, and now we, now just when you think you got him, he drains a long putt. Yeah. Like every time, man, seriously. <laughs> Do you play from the same tees? <laughs> no, we'll play uh, like if Jason's playing the tips, I'll play from one forward or whatever tee. Like I'll get one tee ahead. Yeah. 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 So. That is fantastic. Man, Robbie, we need to get our wives in to become professional golfers so we can play golf too with them. That's true. They, That's we've true. got videos. There's online classes that we can We'll sign, sign them up. up. That's right. Yep. <laughs> Happy just, anniversary. Everybody <laughs> signs up. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Kyla, this has been great. This is everything I'd hoped it would be as soon as Jason said that you were that you were better at golf than it. Let's be honest, you're better at golf. It's okay. Um <laughs> Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time out of your day uh, to tell us more about what you're doing. Uh, for everyone interested in the online classes, we will absolutely be tagging it, linking it, all that kind of stuff. So if you're looking for some winter or, I guess, early spring trying to get a head start, let's just jump on that right now. Uh, and for uh, Robbie, Jonathan, and the Whole Story Podcast, Kyla, thank you again for being on.
Thanks for having me, guys. Awesome stuff you're doing.